Ember Sikorsky from Boise State University. When you hear global warming, do you think of polar bears and icebergs? What about the smoke that hangs over Boise during the wildfire season? Do you think of diminishing snowpack at Bogus leading to a shorter ski season? Or even worse, a decreasing potato yield? How can we protect both our Idaho way of life and our planet? To mitigate global warming, we need to develop carbon-free ways to generate the power that we use every day. It turns out the biggest source of carbon-free energy in the country started right here in Idaho. Picture one was taken in 1951 in Arco, Idaho, and it captures the first time nuclear fission was ever used to generate power. To this day, Idaho National Laboratory is the leading nuclear energy research center in the country. To get as much power as possible while maintaining safety standards unmatched by any other power source, researchers like myself are continually developing advanced nuclear fuel. Before we can use these new fuels to generate power, we do exactly the same thing we do to cars. We crash test them. Imagine for a moment that you're trying to design a new car while maintaining safety standards. You send your car in for a crash test and you get your results back. Fail. Now what? How do you improve if you don't know what went wrong? The same is true for nuclear fuel. The more information that we can get out of our crash tests, the more we know how to improve. Now to get data out, we need sensors that can survive the crash. In nuclear energy, a crash means simulating a meltdown. This means incredibly high temperatures and irradiation. So my research focuses on developing incredibly durable temperature sensors for these safety tests. Just as we need to understand our fuel's performance, we need to understand our sensor's performance. Panel three shows a model I've developed to predict sensor performance knowing only the material that it's made of. The experimental performance is shown in black and the performance predicted by my model is shown in green. Panel four shows an example of my model's predictive capabilities. Since it only needs to know the material, I can predict how performance may change during the crash. I've looked at several different types of material damage and I've determined that irradiation damage in the form of technetium, shown in red, is going to have the most detrimental impact on our sensor's performance. Now we can focus our engineering efforts on mitigating this type of damage. By helping the development of these sensors, I aim for us to get as much information as possible out of our nuclear crash tests. This way, we can advance nuclear fuel, move away from fossil fuels, and hopefully preserve both Idaho and our planet. Great, thank you, Amber. So are you working with the Idaho National Lab? Any th anyone there as you gather your data? Yes, I work really closely with the scientists in the high temperature test lab out at INL. That's great, I visited that before. That's quite fascinating to see it. Mm -hmm. So what got you interested in this area of research? Well, I used to do debate and I would talk about developing alternative energy because we're going to run out of fossil fuels and getting up every weekend and saying fossil fuels are going to run out was a good way to make me think, wow, we should really do something about that. <laughs> <laughs> Debate got you into this, but that's not a very linear thing. So that's <laughs> No, not necessarily. And what kind of classes did you take to get you started on understanding more about this? Um, well, I started off in physics for my undergrad, and I knew I wanted to go into energy, and I found out that in a lot of institutions that's housed in the materials science department. So then I started taking a lot of material science classes. That's great. Well, thank you so much for sharing this. I wish you luck as well. Thank you. Success in your research. Thanks, Amber.